Today we're going to look at a fairly boring equation, but it's going to be made much more interesting not by how we solve it, but by where we solve it. So in particular, we're going to look at the equation x squared equals 1, which of course in the complex numbers or the real numbers or the rational numbers or the integers, the only two solutions are plus minus 1. But we're going to look in z mod n. But you might say, well, what's z mod n? Well, let's review that real quick. So we can very simply think of it as the numbers between 0 and n minus 1, where addition and multiplication are done modulo n. So that means that after you perform addition and multiplication, you divide by n and keep the remainder. So for example, in z15, we have 7 plus 10 is equal to 2. That's because, well, 7 plus 10 is 17, but if you divide 17 by 15, you get a remainder of 2. In other words, 17 is congruent to 2 mod 15. So there, we just kept the remainder. Then next, let's notice that 3 times 5 is equal to 0. But 3 and 5 are neither 0. So this marks some sort of difference from the real numbers. Observe that we multiply two non-zero numbers and we get 0. Now, let's look in z9. We have 8 plus 8 is 5. That's because 8 plus 8 is 16, but 16 is congruent to 5 mod 9. Oh, sorry, that should be 7 mod 9. Okay, well, what next? Well, maybe 4 times 3 in this setting is 3. That's because 12 is congruent to 3 mod 9. And I think this is also interesting as well, because observe that we multiply 3 by something other than 1, the identity, if you will, and we get the number 3. Okay, so now that we've reviewed this, let's go ahead and look at solutions to our equation x squared equals 1 in different settings. So let's observe in z2, there are, well, there's one solution. There's one, but one happens to be the same thing as negative 1. In z4, we have solutions 1 and 3. Observe that 3 is equal to, or 3 squared is equal to 9, which is 1 more than, let's see, 8. So that makes that 1 mod 4. And, well, let's observe that 3 is the same thing as negative 1. So we can think of that as pretty similar to what we had up here. Now in Z8, we get four solutions. So we have 1, 3, 5, 7. But observe that 5 is the same thing as negative 3, and 7 is the same thing as negative 1. So these actually come in pairs. And in Z16, we get 1, 7, 9, and 15, another four solutions. But what you can guess, or maybe guess after looking at a couple of more cases, is that from here out, you always get four solutions if you're looking at Z2 to the N. And that's exactly what we're going to do for the rest of this video, is show that is the fact. Okay, so before we look at our claim carefully, let's notice some structure over here. So notice we have 1 and we have 7, which is, let's see, half of 16 is 8 and 1 less than that is 7. So we have some structure as to the first two solutions. We've always got 1, and then from everything we see here, we always have 1 less than halfway through all of the numbers. And then after that, you just pick up all the negatives of that. So that being said, we can write that down generally and carefully as if x is in z2 to the n, then x squared equals 1, if and only if x equals plus minus 1, or plus minus 1 plus 2 to the n minus 1. Okay, so let's see how we can do this. So let's suppose that we have x squared equals 1, but observe that means that x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. Really, we're saying it's uh, x squared minus 1 is congruent to 0 mod 2 to the n, given our setting here. But now, let's factor that and see that that means that x plus 1 times x minus 1 is congruent to 0 mod 2 to the n. But from this step, let's go ahead and immediately pull out two solutions. And let's note that x equals plus minus 1 are solutions. So uh, further down our argument, we'll suppose 
that x is not equal to plus minus one because we know that those are all solutions. So we're trying to find other solutions. Okay. So now we can take this line right here, this congruence relationship, and recall that that's equivalent to saying that 2 to the n divides x plus 1 times x minus 1. And then maybe furthermore, let's also note that x is an odd number. That's because it squares to the number 1. And well, even in z2 to the n, if you square to the number 1, you must start out being an odd number. But if x is an odd number, then that means that x plus minus 1 are both even numbers. But that means we've got consecutive even numbers, like 2 and 4, 4 and 6, 122 and 124. And it can be easily be shown that consecutive even numbers have a GCD of 2. So that means that the GCD of these two things, x minus 1 and x plus 1, is equal to 2. But then we take their product and we get a multiple of 2 to the n. That means that one of these is like gobbling up most of the factors of 2, while the other one only has one factor of 2. So I'll split this into cases, and I'll do the first case, but I'll let you do the other cases to just to fill in everything. I guess the other case. And this first case will be that 2 to the n minus 1 is a factor of x minus 1. In other words, we can write x minus 1 as 2 to the n minus 1 times some odd number. And how do we know it's an odd number? Well, if it were an even number, then x minus 1 would already be 0 mod 2 to the n. And then we'd be back at our kind of original solutions that we're supposing are not the case. Okay. But now if x minus 1 is 2 to the n minus 1 times an odd, that means x plus 1 is 2 times an odd number. Again, x minus 1 got most of the factors of 2. But now let's go down this line right here and see that this means that x minus 1 is equal to 2k plus 1 times 2 to the n minus 1. That's our odd number times 2 to the n minus 1. We can multiply this out and see that we get 2 to the n times k plus 2 to the n minus 1. But 2 to the n in z2 to the n is 0 by definition. And so that means we get x minus 1 is 2 to the n minus 1, from which we see that x is equal to 1 plus 2 to the n minus 1. So let's see. We had our plus minus 1 solution from are kind of easy out right here. But when we suppose that wasn't the case, from this first case that we took, we got our 1 plus 2 to the n minus 1 solution. And from the second case, which is the other way of splitting up the factors of 2 among these two numbers, x plus 1 and x minus 1, we'll see that we get the other solution. But I'll let you check those details if you want.